Well, looks like I got screwed over. We were just, see, Rosemary, California, it's still December 30th, 2020, counting down fast. And I was originally talking about democracy, it's a little after 7 o'clock anyway in the morning, and Facebook postings and everything else going on underneath the sun. How to drive me crazy this morning. One particular politician posts out a tweet. Somebody makes a meme out of it. And now oh, people are arguing over it. There's some people. And my particular comment when I saw the damn thing, I'm thinking, you got to be freaking kidding me. you got to be kidding me. He understands about the people suffering at this point over here. And he makes a point in saying that I'm lucky I've got this. However, there's other people who don't have enough food. And I'm thinking, you bragging son of a bitch. What is your major malfunction? And I make the point across regarding it. And the point was, you're bragging about your good things, and yet you're going to be talking about the other things at this point over here. But the way you're doing it at this point, and the way you're structuring it, is you're showing that you're bragging. That your opinion matters a great deal. And yes, it does carry weight because you are a politician. You are a politician at this point. And you're trying to show empathy. But the way you're structuring the sentence at this point was bragging. I've known people who have been in tight spaces, and I've been in there myself. But to hear, say, but to hear someone would say that I've got this, however, I know there are other people who are suffering. You have never heard people, at least I haven't come across in my air travel, Stating that particular situation, saying, oh, my cabinets are full, but I know people are starving. People are in food lines are looking at each other, and we know we're starving. We know our food cabinets aren't full. We know we haven't got an option for lunch, except for whatever we can scrape up. So whenever I see someone who tries to do something like that, I'm thinking elitism and bragging. And yet someone who claims that I am the, the cause of the country's problem is showing off ignorance concerning about differences of opinions but also sentence structure and understanding history and understanding life around them. I am pointing out what's going on but I am the point on the cause of the problem. It's smacked of elitism and smacked of egotism. Egomania, actually. Made me question my own, because I'm always constantly questioning myself regarding the humility and humble situation. And to think that my opinion matters to, well, matters above everyone else's is elitism, and that's also egotism. It's also egotistical. The ego is at work. It must be above everything and everybody because it must be. A long while it had taken me to understand this particular point of view. It had taken me a lifetime to learn this. Some people never learn it. <laughs> Some people are too blindsided by it. Our country was formed on differences of opinion, but commonality for the common good. We were agreed to be consent by a governed party. We agreed to a representative country, a representative democracy, basically. We elect a rep representation that would help us out in regarding national or even local policies, from the local school boards all the way to the federal government. We had agreed one way or another. Not by a shotgun, though. Unless, of course, you're going to be going against the government, and then all hell breaks loose. 
People who keep failing to study history keep repeating the damn thing often enough. And they're still oblivious to it. They're still not understanding context and perspective. I have said before in too many of my videos, I am not a wise and guru. I'm not an expert in anything. I've just observed you that much. For the last several years of my life, I've been going over to a college. Looking for an old fart. I'm going to be turning 55 next year. Wow. I've seen, I've read, I've experienced. <coughs> but it doesn't make me an expert in anything or everything. I have my own opinion. I know people have different varied opinions depending upon their own experiences, their own lifestyles, their own life choices. How they were raised, how they were grown, how how they looked at things in life. And how we look at things in life right now is totally different than with everything else. Telling me that I am the cause or the representation of the cause of the problem of the country is pretty damn lame and pretty damn... Well, that's their own opinion. I look at it as ignorance. Because they fail to see the point. Not my point of view. And then again, I've also failed to see their point as well. Because they are making their point. In this country, the United States of America, we have differences of opinion. We have the freedom to agree to disagree. We have the freedom to argue and banter, but also to support the other guy's right to argue and banter their point of view. We all don't have to follow the same pathway. We all have to follow the same mental status. We don't have to follow everything to the letter like everybody else is supposed to be. A herd. We can agree to disagree. We can challenge each other. But we also have to find the commonality and to find the common good in everything and anything. Did they make a point? Did something in their point strike a chord in us to say, wait a second, let's examine that further? No, nope, we've become more and more divisive and more derided. We have to be right, they have to be wrong. As simple as that. It's ego. It's ego. Psychology 101. If anybody else has gone even through a junior college, had to take Psychology 101 to understand that particular point of view. It's not elitism to look for advanced knowledge. It's a desire to understand more and more of your environment. Some people choose not to read books or understand someone else's point of view or concept. They decide to be locked down in their own viewpoint, in their own little telescopic world. Do this. Here's an example. Here's an experiment for you folks. Do this. Look through it through either one eye. Where's your focus? Wherever you can make that world tighter and tighter with your hands and that little aperture that you see that is the focus of your world that is the focus of your thoughts everything when you shove everything through that aperture everything through that aperture well, maybe not everything but you get to drift every your hopes your thoughts your feelings your point of view everything Probably your dynamometer, dynamometer will spread out a bit. But you're focused and you're targeted. You're not seeing the bigger picture. You're not seeing the wider picture. Or the widest picture to get the perspective of what's really going on. Our own egos and our own personalities force us into the situation. We have to be right within this narrow margin. We have to be right in this side, in this section here. Anything beyond that doesn't work. It has to be this. Otherwise, forget it. That's how it works. That's how it is. Everything and every time. 
That's how dictators work. That's how authoritative regimes work. Everything has to go within their own program and specifications. There cannot be any deviations. You do it my way or else. I'm going to force you to do it my way. Because I say so. Not you. I say so. Because my will will force you to think of this way. One ring rules them all. So I'll look at Lord of the Rings. If you want to look at reality, Jack. Russia. Venezuela. Cuba. China. North Korea. Qatar. Iran. In certain perspectives, in certain perspectives, they are viewed one way, but interpreted other ways. Venezuela will pick on first. A democratically elected country, with their leaders, according to their constitution, which they've changed a few times already. But the key point was supposed to be democratically elected. When the people have decided to get rid of one leader for another leader, either by a democratic process or by another process, it it's becomes maddening and chaos. But with one leader having elitism running, instead of for the good of the people, for the good of the selected few, he no longer becomes the popular guy, he becomes the hated guy. His viewpoint hurting the country left and right. And when a country depends upon a certain way of running things, a way of getting income, and denied because of a market, they have to force to conform or be torn apart. Either they adapt to change the lifestyles, to change whatever they can, or they die, and they're dying. People are freaking. People are re rebelling. There's a lot of chaos and confusion happening in a country like that. Cuba was done by a revolution a long time ago. And there's sordid histories concerning about that and how one particular country was going. Different viewpoints of a different country expanding upon their own influence upon another country trying to show and teach how their values are supposed to be honored. But when other people decide that there's supposed to be another viewpoint, another way of life, and they do it by forced revolution, and they kept it up. But in a way, they tried to make it better for other people to live to a point after that. When you have people trying to leave the country, and they can't, Forced back. Very empathetic when it comes down for policies, isn't it? A larger company, actually a larger country, for decades and almost centuries fought over on who's going to rule what particular portion of the land until it came to a point where there was one political power in charge and decided to expand upon its borders. And then had a hard time trying to keep the borders and then collapsing upon itself because of market and because of other factors. They still keep up with the shell of a democracy, but they're still suffering either way because of the old rule and the old ways. Can't force, can't adapt. We have a, another country that's dealt with empires dealt with emperors and conquerors from above or beyond its warm borders. <laughs> and they've tried for many generations to find a better way. If someone does, calls it communism. But a group of people that will rule everybody else, but everyone's supposed to be the same. Everyone's supposed to be a comrade. And 
they see their own way is not working very well. They adapt into Western culture a bit. And those who still want to have freedom and liberty for their own country, they try, but they fail. Individuals are not strong enough. They have to have a combined might to go against the state. And they've tried. And the state just got too damn powerful. We have other countries that are religiously founded that whatever a religious leader dictates it, the commonly elected government has to follow the edict. And there are ways that Westerners are still having a problem trying to understand the concepts, including this guy, of how the country is viewed, how the country is run by, by the viewpoints. It was originally supposed to be ruled one particular way with a bit of democracy, but the democracy wasn't strong enough, and neither was the leaders, to where... Socialism, but emergency response is outside. How about that one? We are experiencing a lot of things that are happening in our life where we have differences of opinions, and when we share them, we're in conflict with everybody else because everyone else has their own elitism point of view. That's the point I was trying to make. If we cannot understand and we cannot adapt, we're doomed to failure. Some people might call it evolution. Survival of the fittest. Well, if the fittest cannot adapt and the fittest do not deserve to call themselves fit, according to our own logic, or else to find a different way to adapt than what we can understand. If we cannot understand that, then we're screwed, don't we? One way or another. We have our own differences. We have our own perspectives. We have our own viewpoints on how things and how life is supposed to be and how it's being generated. And if we can't at least understand that particular concept and grasp onto it, then whatever we say and do when we're trying to make our point across will be the most inflexible bastards around because we're seeing the other side being the most uh, inflexible bastards around. We're seeing the mirror images across from us. If we cannot agree to disagree, if we cannot agree that there should be some kind of compromise, a common ground that we could actually cross and try to pick up something from each side to build something upon it, what's the use? Let's be us versus them and use sledgehammers and clubs and more horses and God knows what else we're going to use and thump the other guy to death and prove that we are the better guy because we have democracy. Without even realizing that democracy is exactly what they were trying to do in the first place. I, people call me on the cause of their country's downfall. Ignorance isn't bliss. Ignorance is the downfall. So is arrogance and apathy. Most importantly, ego. Try thinking about that when we start crossing into the borders of 2021. How much of us and how much of our own egotism, <clears throat> our egotistical natures, are we bringing forth? And will everything else be the same? Or will we actually have any differences? Will we actually have any kind of common ground? Will we actually have any something, a foundation to build upon? Your choice.